we're going to try something a little different. We're going to try a tutorial vid, and we'll see how well the audience retention holds on them. Too many videos that don't really do well in audience retention, I can't keep doing those in series because it'll kill my channel. Which is why I do certain things a certain way, because it's proven that they maintain audience retention, and therefore the impressions keep going and the, and the influence generation keeps going. Being a YouTuber kind of stinks in that venue. But we'll try it. There's been enough audience asking more in-depth more in depth exclusive. This is all about latches and struts for wooden hatches. And then I'll give you a little quick demo in the toward the end of how they work out aluminum hatches for my boat. And uh, we're going to talk about the differences between the struts, where you should um, maintain them and, and place them, and the differences in quality and how that can affect your overall project. Stay tuned. It's all coming into you now. So here we are with some 3 4 inch ball joints. Those are coated and for marine grade applications. And we have a bunch of marine grade struts here from BoatOutfitters.com. One of the only legitimate sources that I could find guaranteed marine grade struts. And I have them in both 10 and 20 pound applications. We'll talk about why I have them in varied applications. Right there, that gray shock is the typical one we've been using for a long time from Amazon or eBay. You can get them in giant bulk. And they will work, but they will also rust. And on top of that, the actual opening of your hatch, the shock quality itself is pretty poor. I will demonstrate that in a while. So what I want to do is give you guys uh, an added perspective on the importance of maybe using an actual marine grade strut. Because depending on the quality of what you're trying to do, um, this may make or break your project over time in terms of longevity of the hatch lasting correctly and opening properly and just overall being a better application that won't rust and, and do really well over time. We have two sets of ball joints. We have a flat ball joint and then we have the other offset one that you saw in the beginning of the video. We're going to have to use a flat ball joint. We're going to have to make a angled bracket that sits right there and flush right in front of the rod tubes and we're going to have to set it at a projected height. Now, if you're wondering what the height should be for the safe travel of the shock, so it, you know you don't install it and all of a sudden it doesn't close because you used up all of its travel, if you place it and then you compare where the shock length of it is, if the height of the ball joint doesn't exceed the actual shock length itself, that is a pretty safe bet right there. So we want to kind of make sure it sits pretty flush in there. Now. That is the default way. Now, if you want to move it up and more, you want your hatch to close a little bit less or open up a little bit more, then you'll have a little bit of wiggle room from there. But that's pretty much a de facto way that your sh your shock will always close correctly. We're going to have to set that right underneath the flat bar I have there as a cosmetic lining for the inside of the hatch. But we're going to just probably put it in there and have it sit flush. And so the shock itself is perpendicular. So there's, it's not kind of closing at an angle, which actually puts a stress on the ball joint unit itself. I want it as close as I possibly can to have the straightest like line of travel. And that is right there. Any closer and it would catch the, the lip there. We're gonna go ahead and run it there. If you're gonna use screws, to hold to fasten this inside your hatch you want the longest screw you can to be able to get the max grip into the wood without it poking through the top and obviously poking your foot so this is about a 3 4 inch thickness hatch right there on the bevel so we're using about that same exact length of screw now it's just a matter of where we want to place the ball joint on the angled bracket there i tried to get the hatches to open up about just under the 90 degree mark. I don't want it to be at a full 90 degree angle. And I definitely don't want them to open past 90 degrees because that puts a lot of stress on the actual ball joint itself and on the hatch. It, it like uses the hatch's weight against it versus just propping it up and keeping the hatch steady. So to avoid shaking and failure over time, my recommendation is to keep it below the 90 degree angle once it's fully opened. We are going to temporarily install this ball joint with just some last screws. And then once we have the desired height of the hatch opening, 
we will then install 1 8 inch rivets to it on a permanent end. Right now we're checking to see how much usable travel we've got. So we only used about half or maybe 60% of that shock's usable travel, meaning the distance it can actually travel down the shaft. We want it to use as much as possible. So that has for, for a lot of reasons. For one, I mean, get the most out of it that you can. And two, the more pressure that's put on it, the better it's gonna be able to hold the hatch open as well. We can actually adjust this one slightly inward. So we're just gonna loosen that one screw and flip that ball joint over to the end right there and then reposition the screws in. If I was smarter, I would have just used one screw to reposition because one screw will hold it in place. Um, really, it should be it should be pretty close. Like when you place it, it's either going to be a swivel the other way or a swivel inward. Right here, we're using much more of the shocks usable travel, almost all of it. And that is what we want. And the hatch is also peaked out at the right desired angle that we want it. So we're going to go ahead and run it here and keep that application. So there are many different applications that you can use. You can use a standard pull latch, you can use a slam latch. In this case, we're gonna be using, in my opinion, the best latches you can possibly use, and those are cam lever latches from Perco. Very, very nice, well-built latches. All cam lever latches, in essence, are really nice to use. Here's how we're gonna install it in our wood application. This is a 3 8 sheet of plywood that we're going to end up running cross beams across. Obviously, we insulate it in the mat. That makes a profound difference over the hatch itself. We have tutorials on these all day. Well, let's just put this thing together real quick so we can give you a nice in-depth overview on how to install the cam lever latches themselves. We're gonna install that thing right there, dead spank in the middle. We left just enough room with that little under bracing and those little side ribs meant there to hold jigs and stuff. We're gonna have just enough room to clear this thing as you'll see. We're going to be using a hole saw on the exact right size. We're gonna place it right in there. We take time to preserve the newly cut hole that broke the seal on our very nicely sealed hatch. And after we do that, we can shove that thing right in there and get it going. It should clear. These are pretty thick. It should clear the max in there. If you want, you can even go ahead and cut even deeper into the carpet right around that. But right here, for this application, we don't have to do that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to clear just enough. It actually comes with spacers. So if you're gonna run these on aluminum hatches, they have pretty thick spacers and actual grommets to keep them in place on say hatches that are only like 0.09 or like 1 8 inch thick. This is thick enough to pretty much max out the entire latch. So it's gonna sit really flush and give us a very nice looking application. All cam lever latches should have the actual cam. This is a pretty nice cam. It's a CNC machined. It's kind of hollowed out to be a little bit lighter but still really strong in certain areas and it's got a allen set screw in the back that fits on because the actual shaft there is tapered off to be square so this doesn't actually move once you set it in place so it came out pretty nice since they're nice and flush obviously we have to attach this hatch down there on the actual hinge which is another video in and of itself but once we put that and we have the struts on there this will be our main tackle lid it'll hold quite a bit of tackle and hold all of our essential jigs up there in the very top slot and be a crucial part of this boat's fishing success. We're gonna go ahead and run a set of rod grommets on the back interface of this tube locker. This can be done out of any just scrap piece of wood. This is a random piece of wood we needed to make the interface. We got the same hole saw we used to cut out the cam lever latches. We use them to cut out the interface here. So let's go ahead and get this thing all dressed up in some carpet. And we start, we like cut this in a star shape. We cut out all the holes just with a, a simple little hobby knife, a carpenter's knife, cut out the interfaces. The same bore that you used in the hole saw, we're gonna use to put right in those holes. And that gives you the exact center marking of where you're gonna want to put your rod grommets. You wanna make sure that the hole saw bore you use doesn't exceed the size of the inner the interface itself. So you see those three those three circles sur surrounding the fenders. You don't want your your hole saw to be bigger than the fenders. You want it to be the exact same size, and you want to line the hole in between all the little fenders, right with the hole saw. Attach them with pan head screws, and it's all done.
Pretty simple mod, huh? Let's try these grommets out. It's the first time I've ever used them. If I like them, I'll stick them in everything else I do. That's in there, man. That's not moving. Look at that. It even keeps the reel from slacking down. So it'll stay that way. That's pretty good. All right, thank you for watching all that. Here is a brief, super preliminary look at this boat in terms of how it was done. This is all aluminum hatches. Quickly, I have demonstration between the actual maroon gray strut, how it opens this hatch versus the standard Amazon strut and how it opens this hatch. I also have these under 20 pound applications and I have this one under a 10, a 10 pound applications. Check this out. How nice that one opened. His belly is shocked. I can lift this one and I don't have to worry about it. That's pretty nice. For my day boxes, I couldn't ask for a better shock. That's under a 10 pound. And really a 10 pound is much more appropriate for a, a one like this. You can put a 22.5 pound or a 20 pound shock on this. It's way overkill. It's gonna jar the hatch. There has to be so much weight over the hatch to make the strut you like be a usable nice strut that's not gonna jar the hatch itself. So this is under a 20 pound um, shock. This is over twice as big as this hatch. So this one, it opens pretty nice. I mean, that was a little bit of shake there because these are almost almost at 90 degrees, just slightly underneath it. Let me put this, not terrible. You obviously kind of maybe want to watch that, but the residual shaking there, if that's residual shaking on a wood hatch, that's going to be detrimental to your hatches. I mean, the screws are eventually going to pull and fail over time. Right here, we have them through bolted into, uh, I mean, the sheet metal on top. So that's not going to happen, but it's still going to cause overall stress here. But, but this is, see how that's nice? You know, watch this one. This one is... <laughs> that, no give. Look at the quality. Look. <laughs> the quality is terrible. <laughs> I'll never use these again. Really, I'm using them because I ran out of marine grade struts. And so I have them here, but you got I mean, you can use them. I mean, you're just taking a risk. You got, you got to have your hand on the hatch. You can't let them f swing free. Um, and I think if you just let them swing free on a wood hatch, that's, you're really like, you're taking a huge risk. And we're in the, we're in the 70% range of refabricating this entire boat. We actually have cantilever latches here. And these one actually have the spacers because of the thin sheet metal. I'll show you. But Outfitters has like all these hatches. Those are different ones. And we will talk about those later on as we get into this boat itself so i want to show you this marine strut that is a two foot shock the thicker poundage i'm not exactly sure the poundage but because of its uh thick resistance we were able to mount it differently to where it's completely cleared out of the way or the other one you saw earlier we mounted it up there not a giant difference just a better look and a cleaner cleaner opening and this one doesn't have really any sort of hindrance you could have placed this one anywhere you wanted and you have full range full range of this one to sit against the gunnel we got a raw grommets there and they do very very nicely in this application so we kept them in there pretty happy about all those three things they really do a profound difference for your boat and the quality of fishing and your experience on the water check all these products out at boat outfitters we'll see you out there stay tuned for tons more product reviews Tons more tutorials. They're all coming at you fast. See you out there.